Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Kirsten Quinn, and welcome to the Philadelphia Cultural Forum on CCPTV, Community College of Philadelphia's educational channel. Tonight, we welcome Philadelphia based singer songwriter Megan Carey to the show. Megan's music career debut was an unintentional triumph. In 1998, she won Billboard Magazine's esteemed Critics' Choice for Best Newcomer for her first album, New Shoes. Up until then, she was a theater actress and a successful voiceover artist. When her fiancé, Matthew Black, unexpectedly died, she picked up his guitar and cathartically wrote her debut, followed by two other albums and dove into a successful folk circuit music career. Her work has garnered favorable comparisons to Natalie Merchant, Sean Colvin, The Indigo Girls, and Stevie Nicks. One critic hailed Megan as having the passionate vocals of Melissa Etheridge singing the stories of Bruce Springsteen. At a gig at CBGB's gallery, Megan met her husband, who was in the opening band. The two married, relocated, and had two children. Initially, Megan tucked away her music career and focused on motherhood, but then she realized she could do both. On January 31st, 2012, Megan Carey released her first album in six years, the slinky and aptly titled Building This House. Let's welcome Megan Carey to the show. Hi, Megan. Hi, thanks. Thank you so much for being here today. We're going to have a, a mini concert um, yeah. at the end of the show, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about where you started out. I know in the beginning, um, prior to getting into theater, you were a biomedical engineering <laughs> oh, no. student, yeah. and then you went into theater and then music. So can you tell me a little bit about your your background, just a little bit about your theater background okay. and moving into music? So I did. I went off to Duke University to, uh, I was pre-med. I, I had always, I was always going to be a biomedical engineer, or, you know, <laughs> I just, that's what I wanted to do. And, and I actually was in a, um, in a calculus class and, and when I had this, I, it must have been a panic attack, but I didn't know at the time. <laughs> right. I was just looking at it, and I was like, okay, I get it. I get the answer. I, you know, we're working through a problem. I can do that. I get the numbers. But I was like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> it meant nothing to me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I think this was like the, the, like the right side of my brain mm -hmm. was just about to be completely snuffed out. Yeah. And I was like, wait. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> so I literally walked out of the class. And she was my one of my favorite profs too, and she understood later. I walked out of the class and I went over to the registrar and I was like, I need to change majors. <laughs> and so I, the you know, first I thought, well, I'll, I'll go into, um, I'll go into, you know, s political science or yeah. something like that. And I, that lasted like a week. I was like, because I thought, well, ha you know, part out of science, <laughs> moving to it. It's like, no, that's not going to do it. That's not at all feeding this this need I have. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I ended up, I ended up with a degree in drama, mm -hmm. with a second in chemistry. But okay. but I, um, it, it all timed out perfectly. There was this visiting professor who came and did an incredible um, acting intensive for about two years, mm -hmm. and I, um, and just to make sure that this was really what I wanted to do, I went off to the National Theater Institute, the Eugene mm -hmm. O'Neill Theater Center up in um, Connecticut, okay. and I did a semester there, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is really what I want to do. I mean, I was compared to everybody else. Um, I, I I didn't fit in to the theater crowd because uh, I, I came into it late in life and mm -hmm. and I wore pink, you know. That's and right. Right. And, but 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 <laughs> theater artists at the O'Neill Center wore black. black. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, right. And in fact, someone they, they they did like an intervention and and they went through my closet <laughs> and they pulled out all the colors <laughs> and they and they all gave me black clothing and I was like, okay, this is great. But then. Then the other problem was that I walked around singing all the time. I was always singing, and, mm -hmm. and one of my classmates came over and he says, Megan, you always sing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess I do. You know. <laughs> he goes, do you realize what that, that means? And I was like, I don't know that, that I like to sing. And he's like, no. He said, you want everyone to think you're happy, but no one is always happy, so you're living a lie. Oh my God. And I was like, no, wow. I just like to sing. <laughs> yeah, so, it's not that deep. Right, right. right. And anyway, I, so I went off to, um, uh, when, I, when I finished at Duke University, I, uh, I was certainly not ready mm -hmm. to be an actor. I, I, 
I was still such a, a newbie and I had so much to learn. So I went off to grad school, mm -hmm. went to FSU Oslo for um, their actor conservancy conservatory, okay. two years. And I came out with my MFA and my equity card. Mm, nice. And I went to New York. Yeah, mm -hmm. I went to New York and with my, my intention was I didn't want to stay in New York. I mean, I, I grew up around it. I grew up in Hershey, Pennsylvania. You know, okay. I, and I went to school in North Carolina, I went to school in Florida. Mm -hmm. I, I, New York was like, whoa, this is awesome. I, no, I did end up staying there 15 years, but, but I really was like, no, no, you know, I'm going to go to New York so that I can audition for regional theater mm -hmm. and go out to the regions, which I did. So I did okay. regional theater for a long time. And then, then everything changed. You know, that, that, I don't know if you want me to go into the whole how we got into music, but but that was that's all sort of tied into how I got into voiceovers and yeah. and once I did that I, I stuck in New York for a little bit until I started touring as a musician yeah. and then that made me you know so I've always been sort of uh, I, I always kept my stuff in New York but I often mm -hmm. was uh, just visiting in various places <laughs> yes. throughout the country mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. mentioned that um, there was a huge turning point in your life and I think a lot of our audience, um, as well as myself, I know what it's like to, to go through a really huge tragedy. Um, I had a boyfriend who killed himself, took his own life back in 2000. And I know um, that you have had a huge tragedy in your life, a, a sudden tragedy um, that really informed your creative life yes. and um, brought about your musical career in a way, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you're willing to talk a little bit about that, um, I know it's a very sensitive topic and I'm here for you. Um, if you'd be willing to talk about that, that would be really awesome. And, and I can, I can okay. because it's, um, you know, it, uh, I worked through a lot of it, it, it with music. Mm -hmm. but um, So I was engaged to be married to Matthew Black mm -hmm. and uh, um, we, he was a musician, mm -hmm. and I used to, I didn't play guitar, he would play and I just kind of sang back up and things like mm -hmm. that, and and um, we were living in New York and I was doing, you know, going off and doing my theater things, and um, and he he died very unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. um, and he was, he was bipolar, mm -hmm. so uh, part of, I, it's important I say that because that's part of how I came to find peace, yeah. which was that, that he, was immediately in a much better place. Mm -hmm. And so it was just about me mm -hmm. finding a good place again. Yeah. So um, actually I was, um, had, had been cast in a show to go up uh, to Shadowland up in uh, uh, Ellenville, New York to do a play called Terra Nova. Okay. And Terra. yeah, I was supposed to start about, uh, um, I was supposed to start rehearsals about three days after Matthew died, oh and so I had to call him up and say, you know, I can't, I can't come up right now. And and they said, well, if you want, you can wait a week and still come up. Mm -hmm. And I I knew that working was going to be the best thing that I could do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, the 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 play is about um, the explorers who went up. Uh, Scott, um, what's his name? I can't remember his first name. Um, he goes up to the or down to the South Pole. There's mm -hmm. a race to the South Pole. Right. And the end of the play is. Kath Kathleen, my, my, my character on stage, mm -hmm. going to meet her husband and all of the crew mm -hmm. uh, of the Terra Nova, but they are all dead. Mm -hmm. They didn't make it back. So the last thing that I that my character does is get up on stage and do a monologue about uh, about you know discovering getting to New Zealand to meet the Terra Nova and discovering that her husband's dead. And um, so the director called me and said, I know. He I said, listen. He said, have you read the play? And I said, yeah. He goes, he said, can you do that last monologue? Yeah. And I was quiet for a second. He said, because you can't cry. I mean, that this character doesn't cry about this. You can't, th it's not, a, and I said, you know what, Bill? I said, it's okay, because these things are mine, and no one gets them for quite a long time. I'm not ready to give any of this exactly. to anybody. Exactly, so, it's gonna take yeah. time. So mm -hmm. you, you can count on me to not allow emotion to seep out yeah. at that, you know. And, um, and so I did that play and, and it, was, it, was, it was a great thing to do. People started, all, all the different theaters where I'd worked, they started kind of throwing roles at me so I could just, to, to be, because working was good. It is and, good. Um, 
and then <clears throat> right and then it was when I was off you know you have all that time when you're once the show's up you have your days free when you're doing regional theater and I I had brought Matthew's guitar up with me to the mountains and um and I really was like, I'm gonna learn how to play this. I'm gonna learn how to play this. Yeah, right. So I started, uh, you know, late in my life. Um, so I went, I, I picked it up, and I figured out some stuff. And but I didn't know any songs. So uh, basically, I wrote them, <laughs> you know. That's and great. that's, and um, and it was, it, you know, I, it, I didn't have any intention of playing them for people. Yeah, right. And, you know, I wrote them for me, and and I and and then, but then we'd all get together after the show, and they're like, we hear you playing guitar all the time. Like, what, you know. So will you play something? I said, I don't know anything. Well, we hear you playing. I said, well, the songs I wrote. And they're like, well, can we hear them? And so, you know, oh, okay. And I started yeah. playing them, and then, th then it became a thing. Like, at the, at the end of the night, we'd all gather, and I'd play whatever I'd written that day, and, um, or whatever I was working on, or whatever. And so, um, so a music career was born. <laughs> and and uh, I went back to New York after the one show to, um, to do... Uh, uh, I don't know. I did, it was in between shows, and mm -hmm. I went back to kind of like check on the apartment and stuff. And I had to stop at this bar on 46th Street called O'Flaherty's because Matthew and I were supposed to play there. I mean, he 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 would play, and I mm -hmm. would sing the little backup stuff. That's mm -hmm. why I didn't know any songs because all I knew was the harmony right. <laughs> and like you know a few words in the in the chorus. You know, <laughs> and so I went in to this Irish bar, and I said, you know, um, I want you to know that next week I I, I can't. Uh, we can't do the show. You know, Matthew Black and I were supposed to do a show, and the guy's like, "Well, why not?" And I said, "Well, because Matthew died." And he looks at me and he says, "So can you do it then?" <laughs> I'm like, "Welcome oh to New York God. City, right?" I'm I mean, like, that's just <laughs> right. So, so what I said was, "Okay, <laughs> okay, I can." And so I came back and I and I and I had Matthew's guitar and. I had to do three 45-minute sets, and I'd, I'd written a handful of songs, and I knew two covers, Bobby McGee and Angel from Montgomery, and I did those for three sets of 45 minutes, and just did them, and lots of stories in between, and, and you know, some, some reprises of the ends of things, and, um, and that was my first ever real gig, and then, you know, that, that led to my music career. So that was. It's really yeah. amazing and very brave of you. <laughs> I would say. Or stupid. Be, you no, know, it's I a fine line. <laughs> I don't think so because I think that being able to immediately write about and mm. share your personal story and journey and leading that into a creative um, outlet yeah. can really be. Um, cathartic and can really change the shape of your life and give you something yeah. to hold on to while you're trying to get through these things. Right. And it did. It did yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. And your song, New Shoes, and also the title of your first album, mm -hmm. right, um, is a song that you'll be doing later for us. And I think the audience will really um, love that song because it's very touching and knowing your story. Um, mm -hmm we can connect with it even more than we will already connect with it right. um, for that reason. So I think being, a, being an actor and being able to tell stories as well as do what you do um, is right. pretty amazing. It's fun. It's mm -hmm. like, it's, it's um, and, I, and I always try to make, when I'm doing a show, and this is, I'm sure the actor in me, um, you know, I make a set list and, and it, it has a beginning and middle and an end. Yeah, and, right. and, the, and it all flows together and, and then my, my my now husband Peter, who I play with, he he'll, he'll go through and check and see if well you can't do that behind that because there's that progression that's similar or you can't do that one next to that one because they're both in the key of G or, or whatever and I'm like okay well we'll do that and then I have to you know rearrange it and um, and then the big joke when we play with my band is that I go through all this and I sort I, I, I create this whole thing you know the the Meisner thing prepare and improvise prepare and improvise like, I, I always make a set list and I never follow it I get midway through and the audience has picked up something from you know something that I'm doing and and so I'm like oh no we got to go here now right or you know or we just did new shoes and and so so we're gonna you know we're gonna do the dog song which uh, is on my live record mm. uh, it, it's you know it's just silly and, and everybody's gonna laugh and right. you know but I really intended to go from new shoes into this other one that's you know heartbreaking I'm like no nah, they're done <laughs> they've had enough you know we're gonna go into something right so the guys are always like yeah I, I always hand them a set list and they're like really <laughs> really 
Yeah, um. Exactly. <laughs> In fact, one of them did that at, the, at a show, and I was like, okay, just for that, I'm going to follow the set list. And I couldn't. I tried, but I couldn't do it. I can't do it. So, yeah. Well, I think that's great. I mean, I actually think that it's, um, you know, that spontaneity really informs music and informs, um, you know, how you're feeling that day and what right. the performance is going to be. It's, it's, you know, um, once in a lifetime, every time you do it, it's, right. it's the... It's kind of like the first time you're doing That's the Joan, performance. Joni Mitchell has that thing. Yeah. It was on one of her old albums. She says, you know, being a, a songwriter is different than being a painter. I mean, like, no one said to Van Gogh, hey, <laughs> man, paint a starry night again, you know? <laughs> and you'd, but they say, do new shoes again. And then they say, and people have come to me and say, well, how do you keep doing new shoes? Like, how can you keep doing it? Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's where they come in, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. every audience is different and every... I feel like, um, and, and like you said, every night I'm in a different place. Yep. And so you just, if you're just there in that moment, mm -hmm. um, you know, y you can relate. When you progressed through New Shoes and you mm. moved on to your second album, <laughs> Onion Dream, right? Um, what spurred that on? What, what brought that on for you? All right, so, so New Shoes was, was you know, very much, I wrote these songs about the, 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 the pain of losing. Mm -hmm. Um, of losing Matthew and 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 trying to let go, you know, and um, and then and I didn't mean just as an aside. I never meant to make a CD. I just had these songs and I wanted to record them to give them to his mom. Yeah. And um, but I didn't even own. A, I had a boombox, but I didn't even own something to plug a mic into it. To <laughs> I didn't know how to record. You know, this was back in the days of cassettes. Yeah. I, I could have made a cassette, but I didn't know how to do it. Right. So. So one thing led to another, and I, I, um, someone, I, I met this guy who now is a musician here, Scott McClatchy, and, mm -hmm. and, and he, I, he said he would produce it for me. Mm -hmm. And he knew a guy who had a, um, a, a studio that we could have access to after hours and blah, blah, blah. And, so, mm -hmm. so, and, the, and he told me how much it was going to be, you know, he thought how much he thought it would cost to mm -hmm. do these six songs that mm -hmm. were on the CD. And I thought, well, I, I don't have that money, but... I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. So I went home that day, and this is one of those things. It's one of those synchronicity things. So when, when you're a voiceover artist, you get mailbox money, which means that you do your job, and then when they play it on the radio or they play it on the TV, you get residuals. Mm -hmm. So you get these checks that, that you don't, you have no idea. It's not like, well, I worked this many hours, so this is how much money right. I'm going to get. You have no idea how much you're going to make on, a, on a, <laughs> a commercial. And it can be very little or it can be a lot. Yeah. But I went and I, to my mailbox that day, and say it was supposed to be like a thousand dollars to make it because we were doing it on the down low. It was like it wasn't that much. It was fourteen hundred. Right. And um, uh, so I went to my mailbox and I opened it up and there were three envelopes from Paradigm, my agency, which meant that they were three different checks. And I yes. opened them up, and they added up to almost exactly what Scott McClatchy said it was going to cost to make to record these songs. And I was like, Wow. Okay, I didn't have this money yesterday. It's not in my budget. It's going to him. So we made this record, and then one thing led to another. Someone got a hold of it at Billboard magazine, and they reviewed it and gave it the Critics' Choice, and and that was um, it, all of a sudden. I was like, okay, that's incredible. Yeah, and then and then you have to do that thing where you have to make the next record. <laughs> and I was like, ah, right, no pressure, to do, no <laughs> pressure. But and um, and the thing is that that I was in a very different space mm -hmm. um, emotionally. I was just as raw and. It, you know, destroyed, which sometimes I feel like you have to be to write music. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well, we'll get to that, but I mean, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm in such a different space now, so writing yeah. is a very different thing. But so I, um, I was going through a lot of painful relationships mm -hmm. because after, after losing Matthew, um, there's, there's all those, you know, y y you're trying to fill a, a void and, mm -hmm. and choosing wrong. <laughs> mates and um, and running through people like their water trying to find this thing and mm. and um, and I and and I, it's like I walked into every relationship like this and okay. uh, and I got my heart broken over, over and, and over, over and um, I know I am not unique in this I know mm -hmm. everyone's had their heart broken yes. but so that was where th and, and and angry about mm -hmm people not being who I wanted them to be and mm -hmm. all, all those things all those emotions mm -hmm. were what went into Onion Dream okay. and um, 
and and you know, and there are there are stories too. And they're, just, they're mostly stories about people that I met in either our relationship or about them. And mm -hmm. and um, and I had a um, some great players play on that, and it was a it was a whole it was a very it was a definitely a, a, a step ahead, okay. you know, w w musically. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm really proud of that record. It's it's mm -hmm. a good one. It, I went through a lot. I had to fire my producer, um, who was mismanaging funds. I, I felt, That's and we, we you know we had some, uh, and then but I ended up producing it with this guy who, when um, when I f I first met him, the first time he came and heard me play by mistake, he'd stumbled out uh, on my show at the Bitter End, mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, I, I used uh, he he worked as a sound guy on mm -hmm. Broadway, and he said, I. I used to record stuff, mm -hmm. and um, I always thought I would want to make a recording studio in my parents' basement. I could do it; they have space. Mm -hmm. I said, and, and he said, "So now I'm going to do it because I want to record you." Uh -oh. And he built it, but I didn't, you know, build it, and they will come. I didn't come. I went to this other producer, you know, this big fancy guy. Right. And when I fired him, I remember standing. I was in Penn Station in New York on a payphone back when they were payphones, <laughs> and, um, and I called him up this guy, Kevin, and I was like, Kevin, I'm in tears, just weeping, because I'd just gone and re gotten my, all of my raw tracks and stuff from this guy. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I have all yeah. this work, all this, but I don't know what to do. And I didn't have a lot of money left. And, and I said, I called Kevin. I said, Kevin, if you would still have me, I would love mm -hmm. to come and have you make this record with mm -hmm. me. And he said immediately, yes. And so we did it. And he just added so much to it, and he's such a f Kevin Lacey is his name, mm -hmm. Freudian slip recording. He <laughs> is such a talented producer, such mm -hmm. a talented drummer, such a talented uh, musician, great ear, and just an all-around great guy. So let's uh, listen to Megan Carey and watch her um, perform. This is going to be a really, really big treat for our audience. So let's let's see it. So this first song is a song that I wrote about this guy that I knew, and then I realized I had far too many songs about guys I knew, so I made this one about a girl that this guy I knew knew. Give her the world, she would want the sky, and give her eternity, and she would want to die. If you give her your soul, she will want your heart Don't even go there, no Don't even start She loves the dark So she'll turn on every light She says it's wrong So you try to make things right And she seems so unhappy But she loves you just the same Don't even go there, no You're not just driven by the need to be dissatisfied An unrelenting attraction to the other side of every fence And I know it makes no sense But try to smooth her way She'll say she likes it rough Give her your all It'll never be enough And if you try to laugh it off Well, don't you know it ain't no joke good well gone up in smoke cause she's driven by the need to be dissatisfied an unrelenting attraction to the other side of everything and I know it makes no sense she sees the glass half empty in you you just
So um, I started writing music uh, a few years back um, after a, a big loss in my life. And I went up to the mountains of New York State to heal and work through it all. And um, it was time to come home and have a memorial service. So I, I called up a dear friend and I said, I don't know how to come home. I don't know what to do because his, his new shoes are still sitting in the middle of our bedroom and, and all of his stuff is still in the bathroom and, and I don't know what to do about that. And she said, well, write a song. So um, this is one of the first songs I ever wrote. It's called New Shoes. Your new shoes are still sitting in the middle of our bedroom floor And your robe still hangs upon a hook on the back of our bathroom door And I know there'll come a day when I put them all away But for now I need them there somehow and I'm at peace with the idea That it was your time to go But was it my time to lose you Is what I need to know And my friends all say you're with me Forever now And their words keep ringing in my ears in spirit anyhow I still sleep on the left side of our big old double bed and I whisper there I love you when all my prayers are said and I know there'll come a time when I leave that all Behind, but for now, I need it all somehow. And I'm at peace with the idea that it was your time to go, but was it my time to lose you? Is what I need to know. And my friends all say you're with me forever now and their words keep ringing in my ears in spirit anyhow your guitar is still perched upon its stand and I haven't yet decided what to do with our wedding bands but for now I need them all somehow and I'm at peace with the idea that it was your time to go but was it my time to lose you is what I need to know and my friends all say you're with me forever now and their words keep ringing in my ears in spirit anyhow and my friends all say you're with me forever now I believe them in spirit anyhow All right, so this is the title track of my new record that was just released this year, and, um, and I usually play with my fabulous band, Analog Gypsies, but I'm going to attempt it solo, so um, whatever seems like it's missing, just fill it in with brilliance, and um, that'll be how it sounds. This is called Building This House. I am building this house brick by brick, board by board. Building this house for my love. I'm 
building this house for the family the family we have not yet begun i am plowing this field seed by seed row by row plowing this field for my love sowing these seeds to feed a family family will raise beneath the sun just begun building this house I am raising you up day by day year by year raising you up on my love raising you up you are my family family sent down by God above you to climb each mountain as it comes I have just begun building this house and I'm not afraid of a day's hard work and I'm not afraid Dig down deep in this cold, dark earth. I'll dig deep to find what's worth my time in this life. And I'll build you this house. I'm building this house. Brick by brick, board by board, I'm building this house. Day by day, year by year. I had a big break of uh, of time where mm -hmm. I got married, um, yeah. and I had two children. Mm -hmm. And my husband is a musician; he's my keyboard right. player, Peter Farrell. He is so talented, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, oh, okay, you are a musician. <laughs> so it's like, no, you're a musician. I'm like, no, you. <laughs> so, but uh, we um, he we got together this band. Uh, we started playing, uh, and these guys were so good. Mm -hmm. They are so good. My band, Analog Gypsies. So I loved the sound, and I was convinced that I needed to go back in the studio and mm -hmm. record again. So we, that's what building this house is what we recorded and released this year, and it's a it's it's got a it's got a lot of different tone. I mean, it's a much uh, it's a much more Up upbeat. <laughs> it's a much mm -hmm. happier CD than either of the either of the first two anyway. Well, it's great because you're in a happier place now. I think our audience would like to know that yes, because I am. <laughs> you know because because you are and you have move through, I mean, it never goes away completely, but you become someone else, right? right. I right. mean, you know, I know when I met my husband, and finally Ari Bank, who also teaches here at CCP. Oh, nice. Um, this is where we met. My, my whole life changed, you know, and I was finally ready to move on, and I definitely think it's informed the, the acting roles that I've gotten. Mm -hmm. and, I do a lot more comedy now, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> you know, instead of <laughs> really heavy stuff, and um, you know, so and it, it, you do kind of your artistry evolves, I guess. It does. You it know? does. Yeah, with and your overall mood and <laughs> yep. the way your life's going. You and know? writing is harder. Is it when you're happy? <laughs> because, right. Well, because it's like, oh, I'm gonna blow some sunshine up your butt. You know, it's like, <laughs> like that's not the. But then you listen to the songs like like that Sheryl Crow song. I want to suck up the sun. Yeah, it's a great song. I mean, there are great happy songs mm -hmm. or Hey Soul Sister, all those. But um, but I guess I was just so used to writing from a place of pain. And uh -huh. 
sorry. And <laughs> I've been um, I've been enjoying writing from this place. It's mm -hmm. a it's a challenge. It's a whole different right. a whole different thing. Whole bunch of major keys. No, <laughs> I, just, I, I, I didn't write a lot of minor keys, but yeah. It's, um, so so building this house and the title track building this house is about rebuilding, about mm -hmm. you know kind of building out from the ashes and 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 and, and doing it for love, mm -hmm. which which was the best part of it. <laughs> you know, it? it is. I have two children. Yeah, tell us oh. about that because you're you're carrying on a music career, you're married, you have children, you're <laughs> touring. How does that, how do you manage to juggle all of that? <laughs> I, yeah, I shake sometimes. Not always. <laughs> yeah. I definitely drop definitely some balls. Definitely not easy. You know, I, um, I have a lot of support. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, it takes a village. Peter, first of all, my husband, is so amazingly supportive and mm -hmm. he plays music with me. So a lot of the music stuff we do together. Okay. Um, we, the kids are now in uh, school full time. Okay. So, so it's a it, just this year. So that was a whole um, that really helped a okay. lot. Um, touring is still we have to bring on. You know, we I call upon family or or, or really close friends who uh -huh. either come with us to watch right. kids and you know that's been that's been, that's been a challenge just trying sure to to sort all that stuff out. I sleep though. I do. I do sleep. <laughs> um, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, it takes a village. I mean, I really have, mm -hmm. I have a lot of great support. That's, that's how I do it. And because my kids are fabulous. <laughs> they are. They're just outrageously wonderful. And, that's yeah. so cool. And they're, they're how old? Four and six? Four, yeah, four and six and a half. Oh Clara, boy. my daughter, is six and a half going on 16 for sure. She's, she went to school in her fringed purple go-go boots nice. and uh, yeah and <laughs> like three layers of things with the top layer being some kind of giraffe print or something <laughs> you know, giraffe skin kind of thing. Like, okay whatever you know. yeah. so she's she's my my fashion girl and then and and Quinn is all boy okay um, and he's he's you know they're they're yummy they're yummy and I and whenever someone someone said this to me and it was it was brilliant they said if if when you're if you're feeling anxious, mm -hmm. it means you're living in the future. You're huh. focused on the future. Yeah. If you're feeling depressed, it means you're living in the past. Mm -hmm. If you're living in this moment, if you're in this moment right now, it content, happy, joyous, mm -hmm. all those things live right here in this moment. Mm -hmm. And with kids, they're constantly bringing, you gotta be in the moment. You right. can't really be anywhere else because they're gonna drag you back, whether it's kicking and screaming mm -hmm. or what. So. I, you know, I'm fueled by that that joy yeah. and that that excitement of living, being present. That's really yeah. great. That's yeah. really great as an artist. So, do your kids like music, or do, are you seeing <laughs> hints that they may go into the <laughs> oh, yeah. the artistic, creative realm of things? When when Clara was little, before she could speak, she used to she used to love trains, Thomas the Tank Engine, and oh, she yeah. would she would take the engines and and move them around, and she would make up these stories and to song and she didn't have the words so she'd be like and she has this little vibrato so <laughs> she's, yeah, she's been singing forever and uh, she now takes uh, piano lessons. Mm -hmm. Peter insists that both kids have to start piano lessons by age five and they must continue until they are 16. And then they can choose. I'm like, okay, and I'm the one who's going to have to make them sit down and practice, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and and but but Clara is um, has shown a really really um, strong natural talent at the at the keyboard. So uh, she's actually playing at the the street festival in Chestnut Hill on Sunday right. as a little recital for, for her her teacher. And um, and she sings like I mm -hmm. said. Quinn is my drummer. <laughs> he is, and his teacher actually came to me and said, do you know? Are you aware that Quinn has uncommonly strong sense of rhythm? And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> my, when we have rehearsals at my house um, in the living room, which is now called, we've dubbed it the music room because that's really what it is. Right. We don't live in there. We do music in there. And so Quint, Quint, not Quinn, Quint, my drummer, okay. will come and set up his full kit. And as soon as Quinn sees that, he's got the sticks and he starts playing. And he can actually play. He can play I've rhythms. Four. Yeah. And I'm like. Okay, I am not. I am not getting a drum kit for you because I'm not going to listen to it unless we can put it in the van or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, so he still has to just. He, he he can only play when there's a visiting drummer. But we'll get there. We'll get to mm -hmm. uh, you know. So they both have. Yeah, they both are definitely 
musical, and Claire is very dramatic too. Is she? Yes, she says she either wants to be a rock star or an actor or the president of the United States. Oh, is that all? That's all. <laughs> not she can new. do all of it. <laughs> no, yeah. Everything. She, she's not reaching for the stars at all. No, know. not at all. But <laughs> so, it seems like she's, <laughs> with her fashion sense and her musical talents. She could do you it. You know, I think she could do it. And mm -hmm. she can follow in your footsteps, your husband's footsteps. That's right. it's, it's pretty cool. Now, you've been playing a lot in this area, mm -hmm. outside of this area. What are some of the places that you've, that you've played and... Well, What's that been like for you? Um, you know, it's it's so different to play in one um, in one region when you're touring. Mm -hmm. You get to like you get to just pop in mm -hmm. every three or four months into uh, into your audience. So right. around here, I'm trying to find audiences in very specific areas. Mm -hmm. You know, st but stay because we don't we're not touring as much. You know, right. So we play in Philly itself. Mm -hmm. I can't play it more than one or two places down there. So I've tried a couple out, and um, I love the Tin Angel. Mm -hmm. I love the Tin Angel. So we played, um, we're playing at the Tin Angel coming up, and we played there in the past. I, I usually play with the duo there because it's just, you know, it's, it's such an intimate, it's a lovely place. It is place. a very yeah. intimate space. So, so the Tin Angel, and we play at uh, Milk Boy in Ardmore. Okay. And, uh, and that's a fun room. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a fun room. You know, there's, um, we play up in, in Doylestown at Puck. Okay. And right in, in Chestnut Hill, we, we're right outside Chestnut Hill. We mm -hmm. live right outside, and there's a there's this great bar called the Mermaid, and we we play okay. there. But mostly, because of the issue of trying to f to you can't get audience to come out to the Mermaid and then down to the Tin Angel the next week and then right. up to you, you know so so I do a lot of house concerts, and they are the bomb. Yeah. I mean, if you're into if you're into live music, if you're into acoustic music, yeah. or even if you're into a band, because I've had my band play house concerts too, you just you gather, you know, you, you get in touch, get in touch with me, <laughs> <laughs> and you gather some friends, and you in your living room, and you know, maybe some food, maybe some drinks, mm -hmm. and the, you you let them know this isn't a party, this is a concert. You're coming to a concert, yeah. and and there, there's and you ask them for a ticket price, like a suggested donation, mm -hmm. and that all goes to the to to the artist, right. and that's how the artist gets paid. Um, and and you sit down in your living room, and this artist gets up in front of you and does your own personal show. And there's no ice machine in the back dropping its load in the middle of new shoes. And there's no, you know, drunk guy going, "Oh man, I'm here for the next band. Who the hell is this?" You know, whatever. Like, there's none of that. It's just, and it's not. It's not a smoky bar smell. It's you're not buying your drinks. I mean, it's it's yeah, right. it's a the, it's a, it's an amazing experience. It's the best way I think to hear live acoustic, especially original music, because it's a listening. It's a total listening experience. Yeah. And um, and. Uh, so I, if I do that, you know, I can go into your living room. If you gather 15 friends, I don't have to gather them. I don't yeah. have to bring my all my fans up. And then hopefully for me, they're new fans. New fans. So what They'll we come see you at the tennis. That's right. That's right. We actually started, um, like, there's, I'm, I'm giving away a house concert for, um, like, uh, I, I'm connected with Living Beyond Breast Cancer oh, because wow. I have a friend who just passed away. And, I'm um, sorry. It was, yeah. Um, but uh, so so I I have donated house concerts to them. So when they have an event and they're doing like a silent auction, yeah, they auction off a house concert, and so they get the money for the house concert, and I come and do it. And so I don't get then 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 right. in in that case it's you don't you don't ask people to give money when they come right. to the door, or whatever. They've already paid for this concert. Mm -hmm. I come and do it. But all the people that are there mm -hmm. are my fans. Then. You know, so I get to, so so I'll do it. I, it raises money for a, a cause that's really you know um, important to me, and I get to, um, I, I get to sing in front of new people. So it works know. for for mm -hmm. both the charity and for you. Yeah. And yep. To be able to support a charity like that is is yeah. pretty amazing. So yeah, and I found that that's you know more than just saying oh I'll come and play at your event. Right. Because. I, 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 I've got to figure out a way to actually monetize it for them, and so this has been—it's mm -hmm. really—it's worked out well. I have a next week. There's an auction for something else for for um, a local church group, okay. and and uh, I was like, yeah, auction one off. <laughs> so that's great. So gonna, yeah. So that's what we. That's really how we try awesome. to give back. So we're going to get to see some of your music now. We're going to get our own concert here. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so we're really excited. And you're going to tell us a little <coughs> bit about each song between the songs that you're doing. Yeah. Is that how this is going to work? Yeah. I mean, I usually, and, and uh, you know, I always, 
I, 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 there's always a story behind a song. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and, um, and, yeah, and, 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 and to me, the stories are pretty much as important Very as the important. songs. Very important. So, yeah. yes. So let's uh, listen to Megan Carey and watch her um, perform. This is going to be a really, really big treat for our audience. So this is the, um, the title track to my second record. And I just want to say, I'm better now. It's called Onion Dream. Maybe it's the weather could be the moon But I've lost the faith I need And I hope it comes back soon I miss the seasons I miss the sky Voice of a robin that once could make me cry. I'm peeling the layers and finding the core, wondering if there's me in there. Maybe it's youth that abandoned me here. Focused and empty, my mind is running clear. But some time ago, I met the devil, it seems And I sold him my soul for this damned Onion dream For this onion dream And I'm searching for get drunk and I'll laugh for a while yeah I'll laugh far too loud just to pass through a smile and I have momentum they call it success but I look in the mirror and all I see is the same damn mess in this onion dream, in this onion dream, in this onion dream. In this onion dream 
All right. So, um, this is probably the only truly, true love song that I've ever written. It's called Lost You in the Light. On a clear and cloudless day, I think I see an answered prayer. Then I look again I see nothing but the glare So I turn and I walk away But my mind, it's playing games I think I hear a voice Someone calling out my name Someone's really there, just beyond the glare. I must have lost you in the light. So I turn and I face the sun. your hand it's on my shoulder and your voice comes from behind I shave my eyes and much to my surprise someone's really there just beyond the glare I must have lost you in the light the picture's not complete Without the lines where light and darkness meet When I turn and I face my shadow It's suddenly clear You were always right here Just beyond the glare I shave my eyes And at last I realize That you were always there Just beyond the glare I must have lost you in the light I must have lost you in the light Um, so, uh, someone asked me one time, how come I never wrote a song about them? And I said, well, because you haven't broken my heart yet. And I realized that that really wasn't a nice thing to say, but, um, I think he was kind of insulted. But this guy, um, he did it so well that he got a trilogy. And the first one is a sweet little love song. It's called Thursdays in the Park. It's on my new record. It's very, um, it's a sweet little, you know, your typical boy meets girl, girl meets boy. Girl falls in love with boy, boy doesn't, you know, one of those songs. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not going to play that because, you know, it's a love song, and, and I already did a love song, and one love song is enough. So um, that was called Thursdays in the Park, and the thing about Thursdays is that Friday always comes. This is called Waiting. The day that follows Thursday, she can't get out of bed. Those familiar words running through her head. She's heard them all before, but this time hoped for more. So in the darkness that's her mind, she rearranges every word. Sun's reflecting off the cobwebs in her mind. She ducks inside, afraid of what she'll find. 
waving so long she wonders could she have been wrong seems a man beyond the myth always falls behind and she's waiting A time on her hands She'll choose the myth The truth it is too sane She'll choose the fantasy So hell remain The one who'll never part The God who won her heart The face that always smiles Hides a soul Torn apart But she's waiting a whole lot of time on her hands a lot of time on her hands and she'll understand why he went away and she'll understand why again he can't stay and she's waiting She's waiting, and she's waiting, and she's waiting, and she's waiting. And that's done. <laughs> so I'm sure all of you really, really enjoyed that. I know that I did. I was deeply moved by some of these songs. I was laughing at the <laughs> irony of others and rejoicing in the in the happiness of your new your new um, album and your new work and thank you so much for sharing that with us I mean I feel like I've been let in and I'm sure the audience does too um, into your life and mm. that's what great artists do so thank you you're welcome um, thanks for for being the listening for it. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone, I'm sure, is really going to enjoy this. <laughs> I'm very excited to hear the feedback um, from our audience and and uh, you know get to get to see what they think too. Because right. I think that you know I think that we're going to get a lot of people to respond to, oh, to yeah. your work. Let me know what you think. I'd absolutely. Love to, I always love to hear you know absolutely people's comments. That some like they're they're good sometimes. You know, yeah. there's some really good like. I was like, I never thought of it that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. 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 So. It's it's it, everybody's interpretation is different, but we get to hear we get to hear yours, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. So, um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you and for, for having sharing me. so much with us. Um, it really means a lot to me and to our audience. And um, to find out more about Megan Carey and to hear her music, check out www.megancarey. Dot com. That's Carrie with a C A R Y mm -hmm. and Megan with an M E G H A N. Mm -hmm. MeganCarrie.com. And thank you, Megan, thank for you. bringing us your heart and soul tonight. And thank you so much, viewing audience, for joining us for this evening's Philadelphia Cultural Forum on CCP TV, Community College of Philadelphia's educational network. And we look forward to seeing you next time when we bring you more of the arts in Philadelphia. Have a great night.